If you go to industrial trade shows, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get five times the amount of leads you currently get. Industrial and manufacturing, marketing and salespeople, you're going to trade shows, whether they are local in the US or overseas, we've got numerous clients going to them, but I'm gonna break down some tactics to help you increase those leads by 5X. This is based on my own personal experience going to the trade shows myself before I started the industrial marketing and sales company. And also when we're working with clients, observing the way that they're handling the trade shows, looking at the data coming out, looking at the performance going in and being able to measure and make adjustments at scale for all the clients that we serve in the industrial manufacturing sector. Let's jump right into topic number one. Topic number one is your booth design. And I'm not here to tell you what colors and things like that and what specific words to put on because I'm sure that you have a marketing team or you've got a trade show company that's gonna make that booth backdrop for you, but I want you to think about it from this standpoint. How many people are gonna be in the booth? Are you in a 10 by 10? Are you in a 40 by 40? A lot of that is gonna dictate how you want your content laid out. A common mistake that people make is if you're in a 10 by 10 or a 10 by 20 booth, they put too much content on the, the backdrop behind them that is too low. When you're laying it out, imagine if you have two or three people in a 10 by 20 booth and you've got a backdrop behind you with all these great words about what it is that you do and pictures of stuff. I would say anything that's roughly chest level on an average height man, chest level and below is somewhat filler space or space where hopefully somebody sees it, but most likely as they're walking past, they're gonna have their eyes pointed upwards to try and look over the heads of the people that are at the booth or around them. So you wanna make sure that all of your eye-catching marketing hook type language is gonna be at the top of your booth backdrop. Then you can get more specific right below it and then just think of that bottom half area, chest level and below. That area, you can put content in there. I'm not saying leave it blank, but typically what we try and do is make that very graphically appealing or we put content that's, that's in there that's less relevant, less eye-catching. So you can put some capabilities down there that you don't really push on or some value proposition for your product that you don't really push on. But too often people just say, oh, I've got floor to ceiling, I've got eight feet in height, fill it up and not realize that, well, when you're walking past, it's like, oh, I can't even see that stuff below that person's chest and then they're just gonna keep on walking. Now, if you're lucky and you're having a conversation with somebody or if somebody does stop and you're busy talking with somebody else and they're kind of looking around your booth, they may look up and down if they can see it in your entire booth backdrop, but don't bank on that fact. You have to look at it. They're walking past, what am I gonna do to catch their eye? Everybody does the whole looking up to see who is this company that I'm walking up to. Do I wanna stop there and talk to these guys or girls? but they're only looking chest level and above. Topic number two is pre-show marketing. What are you guys doing before the show even happens? I'm not talking weeks before the show, I'm talking months, I'm talking three months, six months, what are you doing before the show? You guys typically will do something like, here's a graphic, hey, if you're going to the show, visit me at this booth. Here's a quick hack, make a landing page on your website for that show specifically. Then try and drive traffic to your site to that show page where you can have your graphic, your booth number, your banner, and whatnot, but you want that page to rank for that trade show. Now, this is a tactic that I've been using since 2016, specifically for clients, and the goal of it is to try and outrank other people for that trade show. Now, here's the, the reason why, is if somebody Google searches that trade show, let's say it's MDM Minneapolis, or IMTS Chicago, or Pack Expo, or something like that, they're most likely gonna get the actual show as the organic first result. There's probably not gonna be people running ads against it, but if you can show up as number two, you're optimizing and increasing your brand awareness around that show. On that landing page, having a video, maybe it's your company overview video, maybe it's one specific product or family of products or industry you're trying to focus on, having that on that page, super simple page, built within your website with some call to actions to say register for the event, maybe fill out a form or something where you're trying to say, here's like subscribe to our blog or here's an article, click on this, but you're trying to drive traffic to that page. So that way when you post on social, hey, check it out below, register here, free registration, whatever it is, you're at least getting traffic to your site and then maybe you have a chat pop up that can say, hey, are you guys interested in X, Y, and Z service? It's a way to bring them into your ecosystem and then be able to market to them. You also can track them from a cookie standpoint with Google retargeting. You can also set up the LinkedIn pixel and say, anybody that goes to my website, I wanna retarget them on LinkedIn. So the possibilities are endless. You're just trying to drive them to your site. Once you get them on your site, then you can start to market to them as you want to. Creating a landing page is the key step to that. Ideally, try and optimize for the trade show to get your organic rankings up. 
We've done it for many years. It typically always works. Maybe it's because we're just the best at SEO. I don't know, but it works. Maybe it's because people are just sleeping on it and not doing it the right way. But first step is you gotta look at it from pre-show marketing. Create videos, create short articles, graphics, things like that. Push it on social, send it through email marketing. Have some people on your team make phone calls and call people that you're trying to market to and that you're trying to sell to and be like, hey, are you gonna be at the show, blah, blah, blah? Yeah, I'm gonna be there. Hey, we'd love for you to stop by. Can I book some time for you during that show at this time slot to get a, a personalized presentation or an in-depth look, in, look into this service or this product that we have? But you have to do as much as possible three to six months before the show and really market hard. Ideally, if you can get the list of potential attendees or people that have already registered from the trade show, then you can start to market and call them that way and just make it aware like, hey, you're gonna be at the show, here's where you're gonna be at, why don't you guys stop by and we can do this giveaway or something like that. All right, topic number three, now it's time for the big show, you're gonna work this booth, but how are you gonna work? Are you gonna be sitting down in that chair on your phone? Because we don't do that here. And you shouldn't be doing it either, you need to be standing out in the aisle. No tables in front of your booth, completely empty, if you have to have parts or something like that, that's fine, put it on the side. I want my salespeople, marketing people, whoever it is, standing right at that booth line and the aisleway, and I want you talking to every single person. Do not wait for them to come to you, you go to them. Say something nice to every single person walking by, ask them how their day is going, then ask them what it is that they do, get them talking about themselves, and see if it's a potential fit by saying, oh yeah, we do this, do you wanna talk about it? And they may say no, most of them are gonna say no, and they're gonna keep moving but that's not what the point of this is. The point is how many conversations can you have with people at that trade show? The more that you're talking, the more people that stop, the more attention that's gonna to come to your booth, the more it's gonna slow up traffic in the aisleways, the more it's gonna funnel people, you're getting extra seconds, right? If you've got 12 people in front of your booth, in your booth and in front of it, as people are trying to walk, navigate around the aisle, walk, walk around them, it's taking them longer to get past your booth, so they're gonna stop and say, what's going on over here? What are all these people looking at? And by all these people, I mean it could be six people. What are they looking at? It's like the car crash type of effect. It's like they see a congregation of people and then they want to stop and see what's going on. You're trying to create that type of energy and vibe at your trade show booth. You want to be standing the whole time and talking to everybody, giving out your giveaways. I always say in my videos that I used to use a stress ball. I could throw a stress ball to somebody and just be like, hey, here you go, have a good day after I talk to them, whatever. You could have fun in the aisle way, but the goal is to talk to everybody that you possibly can. Even if it's like, yeah, let me give you your directions to the bathroom or to the lunch area. You have to talk to everybody, no sitting down, and have relevant conversations. Obviously, if somebody's not a fit, try not to spend too much time with them. As long as you have enough people there to cover you, it's okay if you spend two, three, five minutes talking to somebody because you never know what could happen. Again, that's a body at your booth that's drawing attention to you, and it's gonna get more people to look over and say, what's going on with this? Topic number four is gonna be the follow-up. That's where the money's made. You've had those conversations with people. They're like, yeah, send me some information. Yeah, I wanna have a conversation. But they send that to a lot of people, and then they might ghost you. So you have to follow up. That's where you're gonna make the most money. If you want a full, in-depth explanation of how exactly to follow it, check out the link above and also in the description where I have a video from this year going into the details on how to follow up but I want to stress the importance. Just keep in mind, they talk to a lot of people. Whoever gave you their business card, whoever's badge you scan, they talk to a lot of people. And everybody right after the trade show is gonna be poking them. Hey, thanks for visiting me. Hey, let's have a conversation. Hey, how about that project we talked about? The difference between those that are gonna actually get them as clients, those who aren't, are gonna be the ones that continue to follow up after the rest of the market dies off. So I'm talking weeks and possibly months. You may have high adrenaline and be like, dude, it was an awesome trade show. I got so many leads. I'm gonna work these leads. I'm gonna get so many closed deals and make so much money. And then you get into it and it's like, they didn't respond. What happened to all those leads? Nobody's responding to me. And you can be like, you know what? Forget them. I've got other stuff going on. That can't be the case. You have to follow up with weeks and months later. It is not a dead opportunity until they tell you, I have nothing for you. And until then, either you're gonna fail by giving up too soon or they're gonna fail at their attempts to, to ignore you and then they're gonna give in and you can have that meeting. Hopefully you guys got some value out of that content. Share it with somebody that you know and if you're planning on doing some trade shows, walk through those tips, check out my channel, subscribe to it on YouTube, turn on notifications. I've got a lot of short content about trade shows. This is something that we have a lot of experience doing. I'm just sharing what works for us and our clients and hopefully you see some successes too. 
Follow me on LinkedIn. If you guys listen, like listening to podcasts, every major podcast platform, you can find technical sales and marketing with me, and we will see you on the next one.